Here we go. Awesome. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Tim. I'm one of the uh, core guides here at Yam Niska Mountain Adventures um, Mountain Guide. I'm working here for Yam for almost uh, 15 years. And uh, this week, we're going to chat about how to pack for an overnight bivy um, climbing an 11,000 foot peak and going light and fast. Well, trying to be light and fast as we pack the bag here. Um, packing is uh, one question that we get all the time as to how do we just fit everything into a bag for overnight. And often when, when people show up to come and climb these peaks with us, they show up with big, huge, massive backpacks that are billowing out with uh, a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff. And we end up going through people's packs and paring things down to get it to look nice and, uh, you know, compact, similar to, to what I got, got going on here. Um, this uh, summer for me, uh, I've been using the Patagonia Ascensionist 55 liter backpack. Um, and this backpack I can use to get everything in for um, up to almost uh, two or three days worth of guiding in the Alpine. Definitely works really well for um, one night. I can fit more than enough stuff in here for one night. And uh, this winter I was using uh, this pack as well. Um, and uh, I was able to carry everything I needed to do um, four to six day trips uh, on the WAPTA as well. Um, so yeah, let's get into the, uh, the nitty gritty of this and uh, see what I got inside this backpack. So I think maybe what we'll do is, um, you know, I, I packed this pack um, with a trip in mind. And uh, it seems like this summer, there's lots of people coming out and wanting to climb 11,000 foot peaks with us. Typically on a lot of our 11,000 foot trips, um, we end up going out for one night. And uh, we'll use North Victoria uh, as an example for this. So the North, North Peak of Mount Victoria. The way we're doing that one this summer is we're meeting up in Lake Louise around lunchtime on the first day. Um, we're going through everybody's pack. And then um, from there, we drive up to the parking lot at Lake Louise and we hike in and we bivy just above the uh, Plain of Six Glaciers Tea House. And then the next morning we get up bright and early and we go for the peak. And then uh, we come uh, back down and we pack up our gear and uh, we walk out. Um, so this is typically, like I said, the pack I would use, the Ascension is 55 liter. And when I think about packing a pack, I like to try to keep everything I can on the inside of the backpack. So you'll see I typically actually don't have a whole lot of stuff hanging out on the outside of this backpack. The only things I like to try to keep on the outside of my pack is, is anything sharp. And uh, this one here would uh, have my ice axe on the outside of the pack. And then if I do run out of space on the inside of my pack, I'll show you here. Um, the, the nice thing about this pack is all the straps are removable um, on it as well. So I can take them on and off if I do or don't need them. Um, but typically what I can do is I can strap my crampons in the bag on the outside of this pack so that I have all of my sharp stuff living on the exterior of the backpack and then everything else goes in on the inside. Um, a couple things that I didn't actually put in this pack because we do share the load um, when we head up is, um, is ropes and I'll talk about ropes here in a second. And then um, I didn't actually put the, the rack into the pack as well because we'll share the load. Um, so typically what I would do um, for these peaks is uh, I would carry up one of the ropes and then in here I would have all of my glacier gear or any extra climbing gap that I might need depending on the objective that I'm guiding. And then what I would do is I would pass off uh, my climbing rack to, uh, to my guest or my partner to carry up. Um, and that seems to be about an even distribution of the, uh, of the weight. And I'll get into uh, gear and what I traditionally carry for, uh, for a peak like North Victoria or uh, the majority of the Alpine objectives that uh, I might do. Obviously some need extra gear more than others, but uh, we'll get down to that. And then as far as ropes go, we get lots of questions as to what kind of ropes do we carry. Um, well, the ropes that we carry are, are predominantly based off of the objectives that we do. Um, you know, a more um, straightforward um, glaciated route um, that's in really good condition, I might carry just a 30 meter rope um, that'll get me through traveling on the glacier and short roping through any short sections that I might encounter. Um, you know, if there's only a couple of us, a good example of a 30 meter rope might be a Mount Hector, which would be an 11,000 foot objective here in the Rockies. 
Um, but it seems like these days for most um, snow and ice rock objectives, um, I'm carrying um, a 60 meter rope. And uh, I'll show you that this actually could uh, fit in this pack when I take a couple things out of it. Um, but uh, I kept the ropes out just to give you an idea as to the different lengths um, that we are carrying when we're, we're traveling. And again, really what it comes down to is doing your homework and uh, carrying what you need based off of the objective that you're going after. Um, often, sometimes these days, uh, I've been carrying uh, two 40 meter ropes as well. And it just makes it a little bit nicer to be able to stuff the ropes into the pack, or I may be able to share the rope with a partner if we're not bringing as much climbing gear with us. Um, and it, uh, it just fits a lot nicer. And it is nice to just manage 40 meters of rope and pull out the extra 40 when you really need it. And um, an example of uh, two 40 meter ropes that I'd be carrying would be on Eisenhower Tower. If I have two people with me, so we're a party of three, um, I like to carry two 40 meter ropes. That gets me up and down the objective nicely. I'm able to get through the dragon's back feature with a 40 meter rope. And then I can use both the 40 meter ropes when I'm climbing, um, the actual pitched climbing on Eisenhower Tower. And then it works really well as well for doing the technical descenting and getting through the repels. Um, so that's just a brief overview. And this isn't, you know, talking about um, diameters and everything else, just talking about different lengths of rope um, that we're carrying. And again, do your homework and pack based off of the objective that you're going to do. So like I said, um, I got this extra gap here that we'll talk about in a second for what I would typically carry um, on an objective like North Victoria, where I'm dealing with snow and ice, glaciated terrain, as well as a couple of pitches of, uh, of rock climbing. Um, so on the outside of here, um, the ice axe that I've been using these days is the, uh, the Petzl Sumtech um, 59. This one works really well. Um, I typically carry, if I'm going to use one axe, I use one with an ads. It allows me to scrape down, get to the ice, um, and build some anchors if I need to. And uh, this one actually climbs quite nice as well um, and uh, just, just handles uh, really well. I've been using the Sumtech now for the last uh, few years. And um, if I do carry two tools um, for uh, alpine climbing in the summer, again, it depends on the objective and the, the pitch of the ice that I'm climbing and everything else. Um, but if I am going to carry a second tool for me, a lot of the times it's going to be a secondary Sumtech that would have a, a hammer on it. And um, that way I can tap in pitons if I need to, um, or I can uh, hammer in or hammer out uh, anything uh, that I need to, to do. Let's start with the pack. Maybe what I'll do is I'll start with the insides of the pack and then I'll move on to what I carry in the lid over here. So a lot of time and a lot of prep goes into getting this down to the right size. And, uh, you know, I typically um, pack the same way for the majority of the trips that I do. Um, these days, um, in warm weather, um, I typically hike in and uh, one outfit that I would wear to hike in and hike out of. And then I carry one secondary outfit, and that's the, uh, the outfit that I, I climb in. Um, again, walking into North Victoria can be quite hot, um, walking into the bivy. And it has been quite hot this summer walking back there. So what I will do um, is uh, for any of these trips where there is a longer approach, I carry my mountaineering boots in my pack. And I actually have a pair of mountaineering boots in here. And um, I wear in a good pair of trail running shoes. It just saves your feet. It's uh, a longevity thing. And uh, it's really nice taking the mountaineering boots off at the end of an objective and putting back your nice comfortable trail running shoes to walk out often the 5, 10, 12K you have to walk to get back to your car. Um, so that being said, um, in the top of my pack, and what I try to do when I'm packing my pack is I try to think about what I'm going to need throughout the day. So I try to pack everything I might need to put on or take out of the pack um, and, and keep that at the top so it is accessible. And I put stuff that I is not going to be needed till I get to the Bibby site or until I potentially get to the climb and I try to shove that more into the bottom of the pack. Um, so this one here, the way this is packed is just in case, so I'd be walking in in shorts on a nice day like today, um, but just in case um, the weather happens to turn on me, I keep uh, my pants close to the top of my pack. And uh, these are my uh, Patagonia Simul Alpine climbing pants. 
And uh, these things can either roll up nice and tight into nothing or they fold up uh, um, and, uh, and they can be shoved down into the pack. Um, I've been wearing uh, the same outer layer for hiking and approaching um, as well as climbing. Um, this is an older um, layer. This is a, a nano air jacket. And um, this one again packs up really nice and light. And oftentimes when people show up, um, you know, they have their, their jackets all folded up and it looks something like this. And it takes up quite a bit of space in the actual backpack itself. So a little bit of advice for you when you're folding your jackets or folding your clothes and you're trying to shove them in your pack. And again, the primary theme here is packing light. Um, often what I do is I fold it in half on one side and I fold it in half on the other side and I actually roll the jacket into the hood and then I shove it into the hood because it takes up very little space once it's actually inside of my pack and I can shove this thing in and I can get it out of the way. Next thing I have at the top of my pack that's always accessible to me is uh, gonna be my helmet. Um, again, I wear a nice lightweight helmet um, for comfort reasons when I'm climbing, but also um, for having it um, in the pack as well. Um, this is the, uh, the Petzl Sirocco helmet there. And um, the other great thing about having the helmet inside your pack is uh, what you didn't see when I pulled out is my jacket is just shoved into my helmet. So I'm always using all the volume in my backpack and I'm always trying to sort of shove something into something else just to get it out of the way and, and pack it down. So there I have my jacket I would put on and then my pants are right at the top. And again, I have the, the Petzl Sirocco helmet there. One thing to keep in mind with any of these lightweight um, helmets is that they are a little bit more fragile if you do happen to pack them in on the side and try to squish them. Or if you do happen to sit on your pack and the helmet is in the wrong position, there's always a chance with, uh, with these that you can crack them. So just put them in a good spot and just be aware of everything uh, that's in your pack, where it sits and where it lives. The other thing I have close to the top of my pack, and especially on a summer like this, it doesn't seem like the weather forecasts are ever really too accurate for us these days. Um, we keep getting hit with lots of convective storms late in the day, um, in the afternoon. And um, typically when they've been coming in, they've been packing quite a wallop of uh, precipitation with them. So the last thing we wanna do is show up at the bivy and be absolutely drenched. Um, so on top of the simul uh, alpine climbing pants, which are water resistant, I have a pair of uh, Patagonia uh, rain pants in my pack as well. And again, uh, these things pack down into nothing. And what happens is this ends up sitting like this inside my helmet um, as well. So again, it's really taking up very little volume and all the space is being used within the backpack itself. Um, and these have actually come out quite a bit uh, this summer. Um, if I'm just gonna head out for um, one or two nights, um, well, I guess we could talk about cooking. Um, my preference these days um, is to carry a, a jet foil with me. Um, so in here, um, I have my I have my jet foil, um, and uh, you know it boils water really fast. I think this thing boils in under two or three minutes. Um, super easy to use. Takes up very little space within my backpack. And then again, in my jet foil. Um, also lives my dinner. And again, we're just going out for, for one night here um, with the, the objective um, being North Victoria. So in here, I actually have um, my one dinner for the night. And um, this is one of uh, yeah, Miska's uh, uh, backcountry meals that we sell, one of our dehydrated meals. My favorite is the, the bison stew. So if I was going for one night, I'd uh, bring the bison stew. And um, this is actually enough for, uh, for two people in here. Um, so I'll boil, I'll rehydrate, and I can do all of this with just my little jet boil stove. Um, and I can also boil water for coffee. And I'll pull up the rest of my food here in a second and, and show you uh, what I what I carry. Um, but again, you know, in here is also the rest of uh, my stove, um, the bottom of the jet boil, um, and it just attaches to the bottom. And I have my my gas in here a little bit further down um, for it. But it all fits together really nice and compact. So there's dinner for two of us and my stove um, all right there. 
The remainder of my food, um, I actually use uh, an old uh, harness bag to carry the rest of my food and my cutlery in here as well. And um, the only thing I, I didn't pack is, uh, is my lunch. So I have enough space in here that I'd be able to fit my lunch for two days. Um, but in here I have um, my snacks for two days. So a couple bars for each day. Um, I also have my, my breakfast in here as well. So again, thinking light and fast and likely I'm, I'm, I'm eating dinner at uh, two or three, or sorry, eating breakfast, yeah, eating breakfast at two or three in the morning. Um, for me, these, uh, these instant oatmeal packets work really well. Um, they take no time to do. And uh, again, all I have to do is boil water. And these jet boils boil about um, two cups of water at a time. So in the morning, all I end up doing is boiling once. And that's more than enough for me to get uh, my two packs of oatmeal down. And I can also get a coffee out of that. And it also leaves me a little bit more um, hot water so I can clean out the cutlery that I brought along. Um, for cutlery for, um, again, you know, going one night, I typically carry uh, two cups with me. Um, one of them I can eat out of, one of them I can drink out of. Um, the one that I can eat out of is also a measuring cup, so I can accurately measure the right amounts for my dehydrated meals or for my oatmeal, and that all just fits nicely together and compact. And again, I can shove stuff down into the cups. And then I also have a uh, spoon, a fork, and a knife in this, uh, this, uh, this carrying case or this uh, old uh, harness bag as well. So again, everything's got a place, um, really accessible, and it all sort of sits together. So if I need to grab my food, and uh, I might want to boil water, if we get caught in a storm, and we might want to have a tea on the approach, then it's really easy for me to grab all of this stuff and facilitate whatever I need to facilitate in order to make it happen. What do we have in here next? Ha! Ah, always carry a roll of toilet paper with you. Again, that's close to the top of the pack because you never know. Um, and uh, typically for something overnight, I put it into a plastic bag. Um, I always have a, a lighter or two in this bag as well. Um, this lighter um, I can use for dealing with the toilet paper if I need to. I can also, again, it's sort of close to this stuff. I can also grab it if I need to light my jet boil if it's super windy out. And then um, given that it's uh, uh, always good hygiene to carry um, hand sanitizer, my hand sanitizer always lives uh, in this pack as well. So. Um, really accessible and again it's all in there so I can deal with all my hygiene stuff at once in uh, in here. The next thing down here I have is um, a pair of crampons. This is uh, these are the Petzl Lynx uh, crampons. Um, these are a multi adjustable summer mountaineering crampon and um, for me um, whenever I head out on a trip um, I keep my crampons in the bag that this comes with. And then in here as well, I do carry uh, spare crampon parts because you can imagine getting up onto an ice face and uh, all of a sudden uh, a piece of your crampon happens to, to blow out. Um, but I always carry a couple of uh, extra um, tow bales for um, my crampons. Uh, as well as for these ones, um, I carry a, uh, a left and a right. They're both left and right. Um, attachments um, to slide because um, I have had people try to adjust the crampons and pull these and bend them. Um, so I have a couple of these in here as well. So again, I'm trying to think about what's going to get me through most of the scenarios um, in a day of mountaineering um, and blowing a crampon or ruining a crampon. Um, you know, it's nice to have these spare parts with you as opposed to trying to duct tape something together. It's actually a pretty easy, quick fix. It's only a little bit more weight. Um, and again, it fits really nicely into the crampon sack um, and it's all together. So I know where everything is at once. Lots of stuff in this little bag. Um, the next thing I have in here would be uh, what I was talking about splitting the gear. And um, again, I, I was packing just sort of thinking of a, an objective and uh, North Victoria was the objective. So in the morning um, before I actually leave, I would have us separated and, and pre-racked for what I think we're gonna need to, to get us up. Um, so for me, what I would be carrying if I was leading out is um, this would be my, my glacier kit. So this is everything I'm gonna need to travel and work on the glacier. And then, um, you know, my partner would end up carrying um, the climbing rack that would likely um, not come out if they were talking about North Victoria until uh, we were to cross the Bertrand and get up towards the, uh, the Black Band and that's when this might come out and 
we might exchange gear and, and carry what we each need to to get up the route. Um, but uh, yeah, this would be typically my my glacier kit right here. Again, a lot of it's nice and light, and I, I pared it down to just the essentials and, and what I would need to carry out any form of a of a crevasse rescue. In there. Um, obviously, the next thing in there is going to be my harness. Um, this is the Petzl Alpinist uh, harness, I believe is what they call this one. Again, this thing weighs next to nothing. It's nice and light. It has its own satchel and it's nice to just sort of shove in and get it where you need. And again, if you can tell when I'm going through my, my, my pack and the order that I'm packing things, as things come out, you know, this is how I think I'm gonna need it throughout the day, right? So I have my extra layers at the top. I've got my food next to that. And then, you know, if it came time to climb or have to use any climbing equipment, it's close to the top because the last thing you want to do is go, oh my God, my harness is at the bottom of my backpack. Now I have to take everything out of my pack and repack um, in order just to get my harness. So everything has its own space. Um, and I know exactly where it is um, in my pack if I need to grab it. So nice lightweight harness works really well. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, like I said, th these days, I, um, I always hike in in my approach shoes. Um, I'm just, you know, getting a little bit older and thinking about my feet. Um, and it makes a huge difference, you know, if you're going to hike 12 kilometers in a stiff mountaineering boot versus throwing on a nice lightweight pair of approach shoes um, there and back. And it does take up a little bit more space in your backpack. Um, but for an objective like um, North Vic, given current conditions, um, I would probably use um, the Sportiva. This is the Nepal Cube GTX. It's a nice lightweight um, boot. Um, it can take a uh, cramp on, it's got the bail in the back. And then also to save space in my backpack um, is I put um, extra clothing and gloves and I shove them inside my boots. Again, no volume is unused when it comes to packing um, for an overnight climbing trip. So you'll see in this particular boot is um, a pair of uh, gloves. So this would be my um, sort of uh, summer mountaineering glove um, right there. And then um, that's all that uh, is in this boot right here. I got my second boot in here. And um, in my second boot, I rolled up a bit of a warmer layer for climbing the next day. Um, so again, it's nicely folded and rolled up so that it just tucks inside my boot. And then uh, in this uh, boot as well, I have uh, an extra pair of socks. So I always carry um, two pairs of socks um, on any objective. It allows me to dry one pair out and then it's really nice to put a nice fresh uh, dry pair of, uh, of socks on uh, in the morning when you're getting out of your tent to, to go and climb. Um, so that all fits nice inside of my, uh, my mountaineering boots. And again, those are accessible just in case, you know, conditions change or I, I might have to travel uh, across a small pocket glacier. Um, you know, it, it, they're just right there and they're easy for me to grab again without taking everything out of my backpack. Um, next thing down here that's really easy to grab would be um, my Gore-Tex shell. Again, I've packed my Gore-Tex shell the same way I showed you earlier in the video. Um, with packing it into uh, my helmet. So it just folds up and it just tucks into the hood. And then you can actually press these things down so that there, there's nothing to it, as opposed to just doing the, the classic laundry fold and trying to get it in there and it, it billows out. Um, so again, roll these up and fold them into the hood and then you're gonna save yourself a pile of space with clothing. And I think after doing this for a while, um, clothing is one of the, one of the, the cruxes that people have with trying to shove things in their pack is getting the clothing tight enough and they just throw it in there as an, as an afterthought. It's like, oh, I need this, I need this, I need that. Really take a look at the clothing you're gonna bring and ask yourself, do you really need it? And if you do really need it, try to figure out a way to fold it up so that it's nice and tight. And you'll see this is quite a big jacket once it's, uh, once it's unfolded out here, but it's a, you know, a pretty full Gore-Tex shell um, in there. And uh, I wear this thing uh, all the time, especially uh, in the afternoon this summer. Um, and then close again down there would be um, my, uh, my, my gas for my jet boil. Um, so this is a 230 gallon and I believe I can get um, 
well, I'm probably going to say this wrong, but close to 30 to 40 um, foils out of uh, one of these. Um, so this is what I would carry for one night and it would just screw on. Again, nice and compact, doesn't take up much space, and it's actually quite um, light, and it's also easy to light the jet foil in most conditions. Um, as I get a little bit further down into the pack, um, I've got one more jacket in here. Um, so this would be my, my warmer um, down jacket that I might wear around the bivy or once I get higher up into the alpine or if uh, the temperature drops. Um, so I have um, one more warm jacket with me. And again, it's folded up in the same way. This is the Nano Air um, jacket. And this thing packs down to nothing. And I have a whole, um, I guess, quiver of these puff style jackets based off of conditions and based off of weather. And um, the latest one that I've been using for colder weather is the, um, the new Das Parka light one. And that thing is a little bit warmer than this, but it's just as compact as this one. Um, so I've been quite happy with that one if you're looking for a new uh, warmer jacket. And again, you know, unfold this thing out of the hood and it you know, can take up quite a bit of space if it's not wrapped up and folded properly into your backpack. Lots of stuff in this 55 liter backpack. Um, I then get into like more of, uh, more of my sleeping stuff. And uh, one thing I don't ever skimp on because I'm a bit of a creature of comfort and I believe in a little bit of luxury with a little bit of suffering is my pillow. <laughs> this, thing, uh, this thing doesn't ever stay at home. I, I find having a nice pillow can make or break a sleep for you and trying to sleep on your jackets or sleep on the climbing rope or anything you can find um, just doesn't really work for me. Um, so um, this is an X-Fed um, Deluxe Backcountry Pillow. Again, this thing, um, when the air is out of it, you know, it folds up into nothing and I'm never willing to sacrifice the space in my pack for, uh, for my pillow. And some people might call me soft because of that, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> Um, the next thing I have in here is, um, if I'm just going to go for, um, a couple nights, I've been using, um, this MSR single man tent, um, super lightweight, weighs nothing. I think this thing has, um, two tent pegs, takes me no time at all to set up. Um, and, uh, it works quite well. And again, it's super compact. And if I am worried about space and I'm trying to shove more things into my pack, let's say I'm going to go for um, two or three nights. So the extra stuff that might be in here might be a little bit more gas, might be a little bit more food. Then what I'll do is I'll actually take this whole tent apart and I'll fold it up in a, in a different manner so that I can shove it in my pack. But I'm not going to go bring a 90 liter pack just because I'm going for an extra couple of days. I'm just going to get more creative with the stuff that I'm, uh, I'm actually packing in my backpack. Um, the single man tents uh, are, are really great, um, but uh, bear in mind that uh, if you're at a high Alpine Vivi with one of these and you're in, you, you know you're gonna be in some rugged weather, you might want something a little bit beefier than one of these um, or an extra tarp to maybe put over the top because uh, these, these are, are really great in the right climate and in the right weather. Um, Another option is that if you're just going to go for one night um, or a couple nights and you know that you're going to have really great weather and you're going to be sleeping with an open air bivy, um, then what I would carry would be the, the sole escape bivy right here. These things are really great. I think they only retail for between 60 and $80. This thing weighs nothing and um, yeah, really easy to use and you'll save yourself a bunch more space in your pack. Um, but again, if I'm going to end up pulling out um, the sole escape bivy, I'm pretty guaranteed with the weather um, that it's going to be really nice starry nights. The temperature is going to be uh, in my favor. Um, and because uh, you don't want to get caught really out with one of these um, in, uh, in a bad storm, it's just not going to work for you. And it might put a, put a halt on the trip. So weather forecasts, although they're hard in the mountains, sometimes we get those nice high pressure systems and um, I would be rolling uh, with one of these if I could. So again, quite a size difference and quite a weight difference between the two, but you know, the timing's gotta be right. And again, if I'm gonna move into more um, inclement, poor weather, potential of snow, then I'm probably gonna even switch out the uh, one man tent, go for something a little bit beefier, um, like a single wall bibbler uh, tent. And again, that just takes up a little bit more space in the pack, but um, it's gonna be uh, way more comfortable.
once I'm out in the field. As I go a little bit deeper in here, um, I typically carry one thermarest. So I have uh, my thermarest right here. Um, one other thing I might add to this pack is if I think I'm going to be dealing with um, you know, a wet ground, um, I'll probably throw in um, one of the just the blue rolling um, tarps or one of the, the, the blue rolling sleeping pads. And I'll just use that underneath the thermarest between the thermarest and the actual bottom of uh, the tent or the bivy or whatever I'm using. And uh, it does make things uh, a little bit more comfortable. Um, but that'd be the only other thing I might throw in this pack for one more night. Um, I have a tarp in here as well. Um, so this is a silt tarp. This is a two person silt tarp. Um, this gives me the ability to pull this out if we get stuck in a storm while we're approaching. Um, or if we end up getting uh, stuck on the mountain in a storm, we'll typically pull one of these out. We can hide underneath it. Um, if I'm using um, this bivy and I happen to be wrong about the weather, then this gives me an option as well to sort of wrap myself in a tarp or create some sort of shelter um, if I have the, the right terrain in order to use this. So again, I, I got a, a bunch of different options here um, for all sorts of weather within this one pack. What else do I got in here? Um, depending on the time of year um, and what we're dealing with when we're traveling on a glacier, um, I often carry a, uh, a probe with me in the summer. Um, this is a 260 probe and this is a carbon fiber probe. So this takes up no space in my pack and it's super light. And um, typically earlier in the, in the alpine season compared to later in the alpine season, is when I'll be carrying um, my probe with me. Um, but if it's somewhere new that I haven't been before, I'm unfamiliar with how much snow is on the glacier, the, um, the coverage on the glaciers, where all the big um, holes are on the glacier, then I will carry a probe with me because it will allow me to sort of feel through the snowpack and, and feel what, what's out there as I'm traveling in the hills. Last but not least in here, I have uh, my sleeping bag. And um, the last, I'd say probably four years, I've been using the Patagonia sleeping bags and um, they're an all down sleeping bag. And for me personally, when it comes to purchasing a sleeping bag or using a sleeping bag in the Alpine, my choice is always gonna be down. And the reason, primary reason is that it really packs down to, to nothing. Um, this is the minus seven Patagonia sleeping bag in here. I'll pull it out in a second. And this one fits really nice in this um, eight liter compression sack. Um, so again, it doesn't really take up much space. It's super small. And this would be one area I would say a lot of people show up is with um, their sleeping bags not in compression sacks and they come in whatever packaging their sleeping bag came in. And it takes up a ton of space if you don't lock your sleeping bag into an actual compression sack itself. Um, it can, it can be the, the, the game changer between carrying an 80 liter backpack versus a 55 liter backpack is simply just putting your sleeping bag in a good compression sack. So I can't recommend buying a compression sack um, more. It's a, it's a game changer. And you'll see when I open this thing up here, you know, it just unfolds itself. And in here, I've got a full minus eight sleeping bag. And again, there's the compression sack, nice and light, easy to tuck out of the way. And then this is actually, um, this is even the long version of the, uh, of the Patagonia minus, uh, is minus, minus seven sleeping bag. So um, easily, easy to fit into that eight liter compression sack and takes up no space at all given the actual size of the uh, sleeping bag. And um, yeah, these Patagonia sleeping bags are really nice. They've got the, the zipper on the, the front and um, yeah, one of the, the nicer bags I've, I've definitely used over the last bunch of years. And that's really it for the body um, of, my, uh, of my backpack. So 55 liter backpack, but I'm carrying quite a bit, quite a bit of stuff in there um, without going over um, for what I might need, including my, my mountaineering boots um, fitting in this bag. Um, yeah, and then last but not least, we have the top of the pack. And um, the great thing about this Ascensionist pack is that everything can come off and it can go away. 
oftentimes what we do when we when we travel um, and we bivy for one or two nights is if people have a traditional uh, backpacking bag that's not specific to climbing we'll ask them to bring um, an extra bag to actually do the climb in so um, like a 30 liter pack or a 20 liter pack depending on the objective and that's just something else that they have to shove into their backpack um, the great thing about this one is all of these straps are just girth hitched on on the outside of this backpack so i can take all of these straps off i can put them into my compression sack so i don't lose them leave them in my 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 tent um, while i go do the objective and then this thing actually folds down you know into into nothing and is a really comfortable pack just to actually climb with. So you can even take the uh, the waist belt off of this pack for the day as well. Often I'll do that. Um, I just, I don't find myself, once I have a rope and a harness on, I find the waist belt gets in the way for me personally. So I'll just get rid of um, this waist pack as well. And then I've got a really great uh, mountaineering backpack as well as a big 55 liter backpack to carry everything. So that's gonna save me carrying that extra pack um, on the, uh, on the on the trip in general so yeah i know it's a it's a good patagonia plug here but i think they're really knocking it out of the park with the, with this particular pack because it is so multi-purpose and it's really hard to find anybody these days who's making not only a great pack for hiking in but a pack that you can also clip um, some gear off of as well and use as a as a as a climbing pack and a, and a hiking pack so there's that one <clears throat> So on the inside of my pack, what I would carry is I always have an extra set of sunglasses. So I would walk in um, wearing um, the sunglasses that'll be my primary sunglasses, but sunglasses break um, or it just might not be the, the right light or, the, um, or the, the right pair of sunglasses for the objective. So I always have a second, sometimes I have a third pair of sunglasses. And if I'm expecting really terrible weather, I'll also probably throw in a pair of goggles just in case. Um, but in this case right here, um, these would be um, some Jublo sunglasses. These ones have a photochromatic lens. So again, you know, I can get away with one pair of sunglasses with multiple different types of light. Um, and um, these ones have a nice side shield on them as well. Um, so if you're, uh, if you're thinking about purchasing a pair of sunglasses for more mountaineering objectives, it's definitely nice to have the shield across the side because it's going to limit the amount of light getting in. And, um, and uh, yeah, just one pair of sunglasses that, that's a, that are multi-purpose. So always a second set of sunglasses um, in my pack. Um, I always have a form of um, emergency communication depending on the objective I'm doing. Um, so in this plastic bag would live my, my radio. My radio would be pre-programmed with all of the frequencies that I might need to call out for help. And, um, you know, these days what I'm really um, all over is um, what's my cell service like? And what's going to be my primary form of communication just in case something goes sideways? Um, I know that if we're going to talk about North Victoria, I'm going to be able to use my, my cell phone likely to get a phone call out and use my radio to talk to the people coming in to do the rescue. Um, these days up on um, the Icefields Parkway, um, you actually have uh, cell phone service as well if you're climbing Mount Athabasca. But if I'm going to go deeper in, let's say we're going to go climb Mount Assiniboine, then obviously my cell phone's not going to work. So my primary form of communication will likely be my inReach device and my secondary will be my, my radio. And then uh, everything's Bluetooth and paired through my phone and I'm familiar how to use it just in case something goes, uh, goes uh, awry. Um, and again, this stuff is always, my, my rescue communication is always in the top lid of my pack. Everybody in my group knows where it is and everybody in my group knows how to use it. It's really important that everybody understands how to use everybody's radio, everybody's cell phone and everybody's in reach because there's a bunch of different models out on the market these days. Um, and here I have a, a secondary pair of gloves. So I typically carry, as you saw earlier, one pair of uh, more um, wintry mountaineery gloves. And uh, this would just be like a light pair of um, belay style gloves. And uh, I can get away with doing quite a bit with these on. Um, so those live in the top of my pack. So I'm just in case I need to grab them. As far as water goes these days, um, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the platypus um, one liter things. I do pop them and cut them and I probably burn through about five or 10 of these things a summer um, just from, yeah, not being careful enough with them. 
And I always carry um, two or three of these. They fold down into nothing. And um, I also try to pre-plan my water as well, because that's going to save me a little bit of weight. And if you're carrying a big pack all the time, um, you know, saving a little bit of weight here and there actually goes quite a long way for, for longevity if this is something that you want to do for the, the remainder of your days. So um, I'm always trying to figure out or, or look for beta as to what kind of water I'm going to find on the route. And that's how much I'm going to carry in. So I know, let's say North Victoria again, we keep coming back to that one. I'd probably walk in with a liter of water. Um, and then I know that at the Bivy site is a, a good water source, typically, um, that I'd be able to fill up a couple of liters with and do all of my cooking and everything else. So it'd be rare that I would carry more than a liter of water at one time. Um, the only time I would carry more than one liter is if I'm uncertain about uh, my water source and where it's gonna be. Uh, what else do I have in here? Um, I have my first aid kit, again, at the top of my pack. Everybody knows where it is. And um, in here, um, I would carry a standard first aid kit um, with uh, slings. I have a splint in here. I have a bunch of band-aids, a bunch of blister band-aids. And then as well in here at the top of my pack is um, a pocket mask. And then I carry a couple uh, OPAs, so some airways, just in case things go, uh, go really south. And again, this is not buried in my pack. This is in the top of my pack and everybody knows where it is. Everybody knows what's in it and everybody is gonna hopefully know how to grab it and use some form of application in it should something go wrong. Um, my headlamps in the top of my pack. I always wanna know where this thing is. Again, I don't wanna have it buried amongst everything else. Um, and then in here, I would just have like a basic um, overnight kit as well. And uh, I can show you what I carry in my, my overnight kit for one night. Um, I have sunscreen. I'm a, I'm a ginger, so I burn. So I've, I've been using uh, this SPF 110 for quite a few years. Um, and then I always have like three or four lip balms on me somewhere that have a minimum of an SPF 30 in it. You'll only ever sunburn your lips uh, once. So I always, and I did it once. And so now I have lip balm everywhere I go and it's, it's always accessible and um, yeah, bring multiple, um, multiple lip balms with you um, because uh, it'll save your, your lips a lot of grief. Um, I always have a pair of uh, earplugs. Um, oftentimes there's not a lot of other people up where we're bivying, but if we're talking using these lightweight tents, any sort of wind that picks up or any sort of weather that comes in, it's quite noisy in these, these bivy tarps or in these one man tents. And these earplugs can be the difference between sleeping one hour versus trying to sleep two or three hours. So it makes a difference. Um, I have a little bit of medical tape in here that I can fix a whole bunch of stuff with if I need to. Um, I've got um, a bar of sunscreen in here as well. This is an SPF 50. This one typically lives like in my pants on the side or in my jacket. So I can just grab this, especially if I'm walking on a glacier. If I keep stopping every five or 10 minutes when it's really hot to put sunscreen on, it's gonna eat up a lot of time throughout the day. So if I can grab one of these bars and just rub it on while I'm walking, then uh, that's gonna save me a bunch of time. Um, I have uh, some ibuprofen and some Tylenol in here. Um, I always carry a little bit of polysporin um, just in case somebody obviously were to get cut. Um, I have chlorine tablets in here. Um, so if uh, I can't find a clean water source, then for me personally, I find these chlorine tablets work real well. Um, I can put one of these uh, in a liter of water and I can wait for 10 minutes and it's, it's usually a pretty knock on wood guaranteed thing. So I always have chlorine tablets with me. Got my toothbrush, my toothpaste in there. Um, extra lip balm, like I had just talked about. Um, in here, I actually um, carry a couple of these. Um, this is skin glue. Um, so if somebody were to get um, some sort of cut that I wasn't able to, you know, deal with, um, as opposed to, you know, pulling out a whole bunch of band-aids, what I'll do is I'll try to, you know, control the bleeding and then I actually have a, a, a stick of uh, skin glue and this stuff works really well if you can get your hands on, on this stuff. Um, I have some uh, baby wipes just for cleanliness around the baby site in there to go along with my hand sanitizer. And then um, these days I'm, I'm pretty reliant on my phone for a whole bunch of stuff. I use it as, you know, for photos, for videos. Um, I use it as my primary um, device for communications, whether it's using a cell phone signal or using a, a paired in reach to it. 
Um, and then I also use it for um, all of my all of my my mapping as well. So um, these days I'm using Gaia um, exclusively. Um, so if I am out and I am caught in a whiteout, um, or I am um, new to an area and I am trying to use reference points, then I will be using my phone as my mapping um, tool. So I do carry um, a charger in here. And uh, this particular charger, um, I have a few of these, but this would be like my the big brick one. And I believe I can get up to almost uh, six to eight charges out of these. So, um, you know, if your phone is your primary source of communication for whatever it might be, then you need to have a way to, to charge your phone. So uh, I carry this guy around with me. Um, and I guess that's about it. That's what I carry um, for a one night or two night expedition with with climbing sort of as the uh, as the objective. And uh, like I said, often these days it seems to be 11,000ers. So uh, this would be like a classic uh, North Victoria um, deal for when I'm going to need to get up and down the mountain and have a relatively comfortable bivy. Because like I said, a little bit of suffering with a little bit of luxury, hence the pillow, goes a long way. I think I got some questions here. Total weight of the pack with all in. Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I want to say 40 to 50 pounds is what I'm trying to aim for. Um, if it can be less, that's great. Um, but you know, the one thing I find if we're going to talk about weight and, you know, I, I don't really think about like how much does it actually weigh? I think about the size of the pack. And if I was to leave my 55 liter pack at home and the next size up I would have would be a 70 liter pack, then I'm going to put more stuff in that 70 liter pack and it's just going to naturally weigh more. So I try to fit everything into a smaller pack. And that's what I think about when I think about being weight conscious. Uh, what type of sunscreen was that? <laughs> awesome, great question. Uh, this is uh, Neutrogena Ultra Sheer, and this is SPF 110. And these guys are the only ones I've actually found that make a good plug for Neutrogena. <laughs> I find they're the only ones that make a, a 110 that's not super oily and um, works really well if you're sweating. And um, this is the only stuff that actually really works for me up, up on a glacier on really sunny days, anything else. And I, I tend to really burn. The ABC packing procedure from Kenya. Yeah, I don't know what the ABC packing procedure is to be quite honest with you, but if you were to send us a link to it, we'd be more than happy to look into it and get back to you as to, uh, uh, as to, how that might work for us. Sorry, don't know that one. Um, is there anything, Brian Cherko, hey buddy, how's it going? Is there anything I carry in my pack um, that I had back in my patrol days? Yeah, my first aid kit, uh, my water, and I guess it would be an extra layer in my, in my tarp. Good to hear from you, hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I don't know if we have any more questions. We got a couple more coming in. Um, the other thing that's really important that I, I didn't really hit on um, is the size and fit of the pack. If you have a pack that's too big for you or too small for you, um, it's going to be actually be really hard on your body. So it's really important to find a pack that fits and works for you. I've got a plethora of, of packs at home, obviously. Um, and for years, I, I'm guilty of just passing my packs off to my wife, who's, you know, five foot, I don't want to say five foot six, I hope I'm not wrong. Um, and um, so she was always wearing like my size packs. And every time we go hiking, her, her back would hurt or something was just uncomfortable. And it all came back down to the pack. So now we've got a couple of packs for her that are female specific. And I know Patagonia makes them and uh, they work really well for her. And it, it's actually it's game changing when we go out for a hike and she's carrying a heavy load because we've often got our, our kids stuff trapped in there as well. Um, what thermo rest did I show? I showed the, this one would be the, uh, sorry, there's so many of these. I always forget the, the names of the specific ones that I, I have. Um, they're usually written on the uh, inside over here. Flip it open. Do 
She written on the inside. Oh, there it is there. This one is the Thermares Venture. Um, this is one of the, uh, the older ones, I believe. Um, sleeping pads have come quite a long way and uh, you can go lighter um, with these and more, um, more packable as well. It's just uh, a matter of how much money you're, you're, willing, to, uh, you're willing to spend. But um, yeah, there's quite a few of these on the market now. And uh, if I was to buy a new one, I would probably uh, break the bank and get one that's a little bit more packable. Um, a little bit more uh, comfortable as well. Um, what's the best way to filter water? That's a really great question. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different filters out on the market these days, and uh, I'm by no means an expert on uh, filtering water. Um, you know, there's uh, people using lights for filtering water. Um, we use the, uh, the filtration system where you hang the one bag and it drains down into the other one and it filters it that way. Um, I'm a big fan of those ones. They're, they're pretty easy to use. Um, and uh, all you do is, is just, just hang it and it seems to work out. And you know, it, it's really uncommon, I find that I would find myself drinking. Again, this comes down to pre-planning. It'd be really uncommon for me to, um, to have to stop and, and drink out of a, a dirty creek or a dirty river. In the Rockies, if I'm somewhere else in the world, I might be dealing with a different scenario. Um, but if I if I plan properly with my water, I can typically get myself high enough into the Alpine that um, it's not that I'm not ever worried about it. But typically, um, for the most part, um, all I carry is these chlorine tablets. And I've heard people say that they can't stand the taste of it; it makes them feel sick. I, I'm just saying that these these work for me. And through pre planning and traveling higher up into the hills. Um, that seems to work out uh, the best, uh, best for me. Um, I think that's it. Do we have any other questions? Awesome. Well, as you can see, quite a bit of stuff, all fitting into one 55 liter pack, but everything has its place. Everything has its purpose and everything's packed with a, with a, with a plan in, in the back of my mind. Um, I spend quite a bit of time packing for a trip. I just don't throw everything out and just stuff it in. Um, I lay everything out systematically and I lay it out like you saw, clothing, food, rescue, climbing gear, sleeping gear. And then I figure out what I'm gonna need, when I'm gonna need it. And that's how I, that's how I pack my backpack for every single trip that I do, whether it's one night, two nights, or up to five nights. Um, this, is, this is typically my process and I try to, Instead of thinking my, my weight, like I said earlier, my weight comes down to the size of my pack. If it's gonna go 70 liter pack, it's gonna be a heavier pack, I'm gonna pack more. If I can fit everything into a smaller pack, it'll be lighter and it'll force me to bring exactly what I think I'm, I'm gonna need once I get out into the hills. Um, well, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Um, feel free to ask any questions through the Facebook channel. And um, we will continue our guide talk series um, in September. Check Facebook for um, our dates. But as we roll into September, we're gonna um, talk with um, some of our partners about some of the latest gear that's coming out. So we'll have one coming up with uh, Dynafit and Pomoka. We'll have one with uh, the guys from K2, um, as well as Jay with uh, Patagonia and, uh, and Petzl. Yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, have a great uh, rest of the week.